Good day, everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode of Career Podcast for SA. Uh, we've had a very lovely journey, and I just want to take this moment to thank everyone that's already subscribed, commented, and liked most of our videos. Um, as with the other uh, episodes that have gone by, we've got a very interesting topic coming today, which will center mainly around chemical engineering. And I've got a very good friend of mine to talk us through that, um, Tolozani Malinga. Hi, Tolozani. Hi, Tolozani. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be part of all of this. Awesome, awesome. I think what I do with most of the guests in every week is I give them an opportunity just to give us a bit of background on where they started um, and where they got to. So I think with that in mind, who is Togazani Malinga? That's a very interesting question, very difficult interview questions because you never want to appear as being conceited. But Togazani Malinga is a professional within the mining industry. I'm an avid traveler, lover of adventure. I am a chemical engineer by profession. I was born in a small town in the free state called Kwakwa. That is where I did all my schooling. And then I left there to university. I studied at the University of Cape Town. And then post that, my professional career is centered mainly around working within the mining industry. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, chemical engineering, I think everyone knows about it when they're in, university, well, when they're in high school. Uh, but they don't exactly know what it is about. It's just one of those careers that they've read about. You know, all things engineering seem to be good at that <laughs> age. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit more about what exactly chemical engineering is? Yeah, um, I think you are quite right in a sense that most of us read about what chemical engineering is, but we never really have a good idea of what it really is. And then you get the shock of your life when you get to university and you find that Oh, I thought chemical engineering was chemistry, yeah. but actually it isn't. So that I was also under the impression that it was chemistry until I got to varsity. But I think a very loose definition of what chemical engineering is, is essentially a branch of engineering that deals with um, processes of converting raw materials to materials of higher value. Yeah. For example, if we look at the mining industry where I'm currently in, how do we mine those big rocks, those big, big boulders, to get them to that fine, beautiful diamond that you can sell somewhere in London. Yeah. So essentially that's what chemical engineering is, understanding the processes that are required in yeah. order to move from raw product to final product of value. Yeah. yeah. And where might one find, find guys like you, find guys in your profession? So you've, you've mentioned mining for now, but where else would we find chemical engineers? So it, it, it's quite a broad field, and as you study at varsity, you start to understand what is it that you like, and what industry do you want to be involved in. Mm -hmm. So you find chemical engineers in the pharmaceutical space, you find them in your petrochemical space, you find them in your fast-moving consumer goods like your Unilevers, yeah. um, your, your, your GSKs, you find them in, in, in quite a number of fields. I've also seen a number of chemical engineers moving into your banking space. Mm. You've got others who've moved into management consulting. So essentially, if you have that understanding of processes, yeah. you can literally apply it to a majority of all um, s spheres or, or sites. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's really good and it's always something that I try to get across because I think some of our viewers are actually university students uh, yeah. and you find people studying and they feel like you know their life is already funneling in one direction um, and they don't see that there's always opportunities to go left or right. You, know, you don't necessarily have to follow one particular so I always like to get the guests to talk a little bit more about what else is possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think to get to where you are, you obviously didn't go straight from university to your current role. Uh, so it'll be interesting to find out how your career has has, has, has grown, um, you know, whether laterally or vertically since you left university. So I think if we start at university, initially when I arrived at university, I wanted to study chemical engineering, but wasn't really clear about what it is or what it involves. Yeah. But as I went through my first year, second year, and then in my third year, I did vacation work at a mining house. Mm -hmm. That's where I started seeing that, you know, okay, maybe 
I am interested in, in going the mining route um, because in my mind I always thought I'd go the petrochemical route which is the traditional chemical engineers route. Um, so after doing that vocation work at that mining house I then started to look at what opportunities are there within the mining industry and how do I get into the mining industry. Yeah. So I then applied for a graduate program with Anglo American. That's how my journey within the mining industry uh, started. And I must say it has not been a journey that was just filled with being the traditional chemical engineer or following the traditional chemical engineer's trajectory. So within that graduate program, I had the opportunity to work in three different roles. The first role was the traditional engineer's role where I work at a mining <clears throat> at a mining site and I was involved on into the day-to-day -day running of the mine. How do we move from mining the iron ore and getting it to the final product that is shipped um, to, to, to our customers? Yeah. But immediately after that first role, I went into a less chemical engineering traditional route um, where I was more into business performance. We were looking at what are some of um, business drivers, what is actually important to the CEO of a global company like Anglo-American. Yeah. So that sort of started to introduce me to a different way of thinking, um, different processes because in a sense it was still processing, however processing of financial data, um, safety and health data and that kind of information. Yeah. And then immediately after that role then I, I had an opportunity to go to Brazil where I got into a traditional chemical engineer's role, um, working with the process development team at Minas Rio. Mm -hmm. It was a very interesting role, um, very challenging in a sense that now I was in a different country which spoke a different language um, and you know if you get to go to a very small mining town especially in a different country yeah. there's like 90% or more of the people do not even speak English so it's like throwing you into the deep end learn about the business learn about the language itself learn about the culture so it was out of learning but I think in a sense it has shaped who I've become to date because um, I'm more of a confident person I'm, I know that when it comes to, to learning things quickly I can do that and I can add value yeah yeah and I take it you've got Portuguese on lock yeah I do I do I'm actually uh, <laughs> one of my side things that I'm doing yeah. um, I, I, I'm starting to teach Portuguese for travel yeah. so people who are interested in learning Portuguese um, because they'll be traveling to a Portuguese country. Yeah. Um, I'm teaching that because sometimes you get to an airport and everything is in Portuguese and you're like, oh my God, what is this? Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. I don't think there's many people whose roles just give them a life skill like that, but all of a sudden you can converse with a huge percentage of yeah. the world. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, okay. What kind of person do you think, what kind of personality traits should a person have to be able to do uh, or to take part in the same journey that you took in as a I think firstly you have to be an individual who is prepared to learn a lot um, in a short space of time, willing to learn. Um, I think they call it lifelong learning. So you have to be an individual who's very much willing to do that. Um, willing to make mistakes. If you do make mistakes, how do I rectify them and how do I learn from them? Um, you have to be an individual well, perseverance is what you actually need because even adversity, um, chemical engineering is not easy. I think you know that yeah. engineering in general is not easy. But um, in order to, 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 to get to the end, you need to be an individual who is very much perseveres. Um, and that comes with really understanding what the objective is. For example, if I'm at a university, what do I want to get out of here by year X, what do I want out of this? Um, you know, if I want a degree, then you've got to have to work hard, push yourself, persevere and all that. So I think those are the three main um, 
characteristics I could say that uh, every young individual who wants to get into engineering and chemical engineering to be specific needs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm also one of the people that happen to follow your life um, on Instagram and so on. Um, and I think I, I speak for probably anyone who's on your Instagram when I say, you know, it's not very chemical engineering. I think it's, it's clear that there's a lot more to Tokozani, the person, than just uh, the professional side. So maybe let's touch on that a little bit. Um, so who is Tokozani outside chemical engineering? Um, I think I touched a bit on this where when I started and I said I, I am an avid traveler and I love adventure and I've been fortunate because the work that I do has exposed me to a lot of traveling for example I'm working for a global mining company you get opportunities to visit different countries and that in a sense has given me the opportunity to just realize what is out there so one of the things that I enjoy doing a lot when I'm not working is traveling um, and I've recently just started getting into travel writing because I realized that, um, you know, yes I travel but I actually have a lot of thoughts around what a particular place is like and hopefully to, to, to try and inspire other people to, to visit that particular place because I think in general um, traveling can give one quite a lot of perspective you can learn quite a lot about yourself a lot about different places just from traveling um, i think an example that i that i have which is an interesting one is my parents um, when i was still living in brazil they thought that you know brazil you know anywhere outside south africa it's probably the best country to be <laughs> at you know south africa has got so many problems, yeah. you've got corruption, you've got all this and that. But then having spent my two years there, I actually realized, well, the country's actually quite similar. And they were quite surprised that, okay, we thought, you know, outside our South African borders, things are better. But those are the kind of things that you you get to learn as you, as you travel. Yeah. Um, I think another thing is that as South Africans, as a nation, we're very conservative. And you get to a country like Brazil where anything is anything. Um, you get to the beach, people are in bikinis and, you know, yeah. minding their own business. And yeah. Here in South Africa, it will be frowned upon yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to see like an old man in a bikini. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so those are the kind of perspectives that, yeah. that traveling gives you and that traveling has given me. So I created my page, Mzanzi to the World, where I share all these experiences and I've got a blog where I write about these experiences. Yeah. Um, because in most instances, yes, people see photos and it looks nice, but they don't really know what a particular place is like. Yeah, yeah I think we'll definitely leave details of, you know, both the page, uh, you know, both the Instagram page as well as the blog page um, in the description. Um, but I think I'm going to put you on the spot now for a little bit. Uh, if you can give me top five places that you've been to, um, and you can take a second to think about it, um, and give me in that order from fifth to the best place. Fifth to the best? Jeez. Okay. There's no particular order. You can okay, in no particular five. order. Yes. Top five places that I've visited. Um, so I've done a lot of traveling in South America, okay. and South America is amazing. Yeah. Um, so... Definitely Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. um, then a small island in Brazil called Morro de São Paulo. Mm -hmm. um, I recently went to Bali, it was amazing, so Bali. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa has beautiful places as well that we've taken, I mean, we've underestimated what South Africa has to offer from a travel perspective. I recently went to a small town called Canton on Sea, it was amazing, mm -hmm. so I'll put that on my list as well. Yeah. Um, Cape Town, obviously, um, a lot of people whom you talk to outside the country, first thing they ask you about is Cape Town. It's even deemed the most beautiful city, I mean, part of the most beautiful cities in the world. So, yeah, yeah those are the five places. I could name more, but no, no. since so you yeah, ask for uh, five. <laughs> no, if people want to see more, they'll have to go to your page. Uh, definitely, for all definitely. the additional places, yeah. 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 Is there anything else that you feel I haven't asked you that you want to get off your shoulders? 
I think if you mention get off your shorts, <laughs> I'm, I'm because that's a heavy load. Um, but I think one thing that perhaps I'd like for us to just chat a bit about yeah. is the importance of one following what they're interested in, especially from a career perspective. Um, I think when we were growing up, um, it was more a question of get into a career so that you can get a job, so that you can work and earn, and that's about it. Yeah. There was never a question around, are you happy about what you're doing? Are you really enjoying what you're doing? Um, I think right now, you and I are fortunate in a sense that we get to do what we studied and we still get to pursue our other passions. Yeah. For example, you are very much into youth development and yeah. all that. So that, that is an important thing, you know, being or making sure that you are clear on what your interests are and how that fits in with the type of career that, that you get into. Yeah. Um, obviously, you will not necessarily always get the support that you need but I think if you are extremely passionate about what you want to do, then you can definitely make a living out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, 100%, 100%. It's been a very, um, how do you say, a very focused but very interesting topic today with um, Tobazani. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Um, I will personally forward them, or Tobazani will go to the page himself and respond to them. Um, definitely, to yeah. Be. Uh, but thank you very much for coming through and I hope this is not the last time that we see you on this podcast. Definitely, no. Thank you very much for having me and all the best. Awesome. Subscribe and like guys. Thank you. Awesome.